couple things. It should reinforce the concepts that we talked about when we talked about grid views. Because the stuff with grid views, all the stuff that we did with grid views, is going to be pretty much the same as the stuff we do with, with a detail view. So in a way, it's a review. Uh, and, and so this will be just extra practice on doing this stuff. And it will show you, um, again, how to do the things that we did with detail views, which is amazingly similar to how you do it with grid views. Which makes sense if you consider, you know, from an object-oriented perspective, those two probably have uh, a common ancestor, and probably a lot of the code exists on that ancestor level, so it doesn't need to be duplicated. That's why it behaves the same. But anyhow, um, after we've done our thing with um, a details view, we're going to start looking at inserts. All right, and we'll look at doing inserts a couple of different ways. All right, um, we're using details views and grid views so far to do all our maintenance. You might want to say, forget that. I'm going to write my own form. And my own form is going to go and do updates or deletes or whatever. And there's reasons for doing that. And, and we'll look at maybe some of the uh, reasons for doing that and, and we'll explore that. But anyhow, after we do our review with the details view, um, we'll get into doing inserts. Let me describe what, what I want to do. And uh, talk about um, the approach that we're going to take. Uh, again, if you, if you get, you know, one of, the, one of the primary things I try to emphasize in all my classes is, you know, the old look before you leap. You know, measure twice, cut once. Um, all those sorts of things that, that talk about the planning that you're going to do beforehand. Because, uh, again, a mistake I see all the time is people just opening up their Visual Studio or, or editor and just start hacking away at it, and you may get a solution, but you won't necessarily get the best solution, and it might take you a lot longer, and, and so on. It, it's funny. Um, I would drive from here, approximately, Lorraine actually, to, to Beechwood for a job that I had years ago. And, you know, if I hear about the weather or construction, I'd find all these shortcuts to get me home. The shortcuts invariably took me longer than if I would have taken the regular steady as they goes route to begin with. All right, so you got to be careful thinking in terms of well, I'm just going to bang this out; it'll go quicker. Chances are it won't. You know, take take the time to think it through and follow the, the the appropriate process for developing this, and you'll be in a lot better shape. At any rate, here's what I want to do. Right now, we have a grid view. What we worked on last time was a grid view for the um, faculty table. And we show a few rows in that table. Or, I'm sorry, we show a few columns in that table. Last name, first name, room, I think. Does anyone hear an odd noise? Room, and uh, then we have an edit and delete. That is weird. <laughs> is it coming from the plug? <laughs> I don't know. It might be coming from the other side. <laughs> it, 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 it sounds like a bird. I mean, to me. Well, it would be the first time I've had a bird in one of my classrooms that I've been in. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to be <laughs> Yeah. Edit and delete. And, and I, I certainly am not going to put my head down there. I, I have seen too many YouTube videos for me to put my head down there. All right. So, yeah, get your... You, you guys, you folks that do have video on your phones, you might want to get them on standby. All right. Because uh, this could get exciting. <laughs> All right. Here's what. Here's what. Uh, yeah. Here's what we want to do, though. I want to make, say, the last name a link. Okay. That will take me to a details page. And the details page will have everything about that faculty person. We'll have their first name, last name and a couple of their related fields, fields are related to other tables, the faculty rank and the location. 
And I want the ability to edit and delete from that details view. All right? And of course, the ones that um, need to be, I'm going to make drop downs. And I'm going to add some validation as well to this. So I'm going to go in and add some validation for first name and last name, let's say. All right? So that's our goal. All right? Um, parts of this we've done before. Actually, we've done everything except making this able to be edited. And even that we kind of did when we did the grid view. And it's going to be the same. So in a way, this is sort of largely a review exercise. So let's go and... Pull down what we had last time and start working on it. Now, what am I going to need? I, I talked about creating a link. Here, here's something I forgot to, to talk about. I talked about creating a link on the um, grid that points to the details page. What is that link going to look like? What does that link need to contain for this to work? Well, it needs to contain the name of the details page, of course. Right? What else does it need to contain? Yeah, it needs to contain the, the primary key of that faculty table. Right? Um, because... That page needs to know which faculty person we want to add it. All right. And how do you point to a distinct row in, in, um, in a database? You point via the primary key. So let's go and download this. And then we'll go from there. Studio, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the link. As I do this, I'm going to make a suggestion of how I think the best way to approach this is. maintenance as a set as a start file. Let's go and bring that up. And what I want to do is I want to change the last name so that it's a link to the detail page. So I will go in and edit columns on the grid view when it comes up. And I'm going to, actually, probably the easiest way to do this, I'm just going to remove the last name. All right. Then I'm going to create a new column for the last name that's going to be a hyperlink field. So I'll go and add that. And then I can use this to rearrange in the order that I want it to be. All right. Header text, I'm going to change to say faculty last name. D 
These four fields are going to become important. Um, actually, three of the four fields are going to become important. One thing we can do is we can specify a data field to be the text, all right, of this link. And we can also specify a data field to be the, um, be contained in the URL of this link. So, I'm going to go here under data text field, and I'm going to say that I want, and for some reason this doesn't show up. I don't know why. It doesn't show up the fields available in the dropdown. But I'm going to type in FL name. All right. Now, it's going to ask me for the data navigate URL fields. This is a data that I want to pass on the query string, right? I want to be part of the URL. And what do I want to be part of the URL? Well, I want the faculty ID to be part of the URL. And I have to format that somehow. Um, I'm not only passing the faculty ID. I want the URL to be something like faculty details.asp at question mark key equals curly bracket, zero curly bracket. I deliberately pick key instead of ID. And I deliberately pick key instead of FID. I wanted to make sure you really understood what was going on here. All right? It's not by magic. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of people say, well, i got to call that ID because that's what you did in the lecture. That's not the case. That's just a name that I picked. So now I'm picking another name. I'm picking the name of key to be the field that's going to be passed on the query string. All right? So it doesn't matter what you call it. It matters, it, it, what matters is when you pull that field off the query string, you call it the same thing as when you created that, that link. So the link I'm creating to faculty, D-E-T, dot A-S-P-X, question mark, key equals something. So when I pull it off, I need to look for it in the query string field called key. All right? So I click OK, and my link should be created. Um, let's go and actually make the faculty detail page. And we won't worry about updates yet. Again, strong believer in doing things incrementally. Get a piece of it working, then work on the next piece. All right? So I will go in and say File, New. File, web form, <laughs> faculty, D-E-T, dot A-S-P-X. And I'll go here, and I will put my grid view on, or I'm sorry, my details view on. And I'll put my SQL data source on. Configure SQL data source. Use the same old connection string. By the way, one thing that we've observed, if you go and you do not see your connection strings here, you did not open your project correctly. You open up the wrong folder. You open up maybe a folder above the folder where your project is. When I refer to the project folder, I'm talking about the folder that contains the web config file. So I did it correctly because I see my connection strings. If I didn't do this correctly, then Visual Studio can't find the, um, can't find the web config file, and therefore it can't find your connection strings. So I'll click connection strings, school, next. It's towards the end of the semester, so I am getting lazy. No, I'm not. I'm not yet. I still have a bit of fight in me. All right. <laughs> so we're going to go in here and we're going to custom write the, the SQL statement. What I was thinking of doing is using this to automatically pull that. But now nah, we still have a little bit of fight in me. So I'll go to next. And right now I'm just going to pull the select statement. And I'm only going to pull the select statement for some of the fields because I don't remember all of them. But I will, I will pull for some of them. I'll select FID, comma, 
FF name, comma, FL name, comma, faculty rank, um, location ID from faculty. What do I need to tack on to that select statement? <coughs> what do I need to put at the end? Yeah, I need to put a where clause to say where, and not the word key, but the actual column name for the primary key, which is FID, equals question mark. In other words, that's going to get filled in at runtime. <coughs> All right? So then I click Next. Now I have to specify where I'm getting it from. I am getting it from the query string. And what's the name of the string? It is key. Because that's what I called when I created the link. All right, we'll test this query. Put in some value. All right, that looks like that pulled someone up. All right. And then I'm going to finish. But before I finish, notice that for faculty rank and location ID, it's pulling just the ID number. It's pulling the, it's pulling the key, right? Because that's the, all that is in the faculty table. I probably don't want that, right? I probably want to see the full description of the faculty description uh, or the faculty rank. And I probably want to see the building and room number for the, for the location. Now, here's something that's important, and this has implications for your next lab assignment. My strong suggestion is, if you're doing a grid where you're updating a table, a grid or a details view where you're updating the table, keep it to just one table. In other words, one thing that you could do is you could join the faculty table to the faculty rank table and the location table. All right, You could do that. And then you could display the description and the location, building, and room number. That muddies the water when you're doing updates when multiple tables are involved. I'm not saying it can't be done. But it just sort of muddies the water. And it's my experience that it's better if you just say, hey, really, I'm updating the faculty table. So I'm going to write my select to deal with the faculty table. All right. I will pull in the other fields via drop downs. All right. And I will, I'll, uh, again, that's how I will go and. Uh, handle the fact that I don't want to display the keys, I instead want to display the values. So again, my suggestion, stick to one table on these and one table only. So implications for what you're doing for the, um, for the automobile, you know, pull everything from the automobile table. Don't join it to the model table and the other tables. All right. Instead, write a statement that pulls everything from the automobile table and then use drop downs for the for the other other fields. All right. So finish. And then I'm going to bind. And away we go. All right. I'll run this. I sort of messed up my editing by making that a link, but that's okay. I was curious about that. That's okay. We can we can handle that. But now, if I click a link, it brings up a grid. Or I'm sorry, details view with just that person. All right. So let's go and let's be able to edit this now. To be able to edit it, what changes do I need to make? What changes do I need to make to the code that I've already created? Pardon me? Well, I need something even before that, right? Do the modify SQL statement. 
yeah, I have to do the update statement. I have to put the SQL statement in for the update. And then I have to tell the data grid, or I'm sorry, the, the details view, that it's okay to update. So let's do, let's do the update statement first. So I'll go into configure data source, go into update, and I'll put in update faculty set ff name equals question mark. FL name equals question mark. F rank equals question mark. LOCID equals question mark. Where FID equals question mark. All right. Yeah. I'm working with the assumption that I only want to change these four fields. <coughs> All right, update faculty set FF name equals question mark, FL name equals question mark. F rank equals question mark, comma, location ID equals question mark, where F ID equals question mark. So with an update, it is update table name set, and then we have pairs of columns names and values. We have the where clause then to prohibit it from updating every faculty person. All right. No. That's what I found out. Yeah, you, you cannot do two tables at one time. Hence, going back to my suggestion of making the, 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 the details view or, or grid view only contain one table and use drop downs to, to show related data. Uh, in, in, program, or in database engines that support stored procedures, if you would use a stored procedure to update two tables. But in access, given that access doesn't support pro, uh, stored procedures, we're, we're out of luck there. Anyhow, that's what the update statement looks like. So, we've specified the update statement for this. Now we have to specify and tell the grid view, I'm sorry, the details view, that it is okay to edit. We'll leave detail, or we'll leave uh, delete off, but it would be about the same thing. We'd have to write the delete statement, which would be delete from faculty where FID equals question mark. So that one would be pretty easy. So now let's go and let's make sure we're still working. All right. We go in here. Click on Shang to edit her. We edit. We can go and we can change and correct the name if it's wrong. All right. go back to the list, refresh, and we see that it updated it. Probably should put a link on that details page to go back to um, the other page. All right? After they're done editing it. Any questions about this? Pretty straightforward. Question? Now we're at the point where we want to add the drop downs. Yes? I've got it. Uh, my maintenance on two different tables. I mean, my service date is on one table, and my service name is on another table. And if I'm going to update those, how I've got two different tables involved in my details view. Well, what is your the the question is is what you know if if you're doing service records for your automobile. You have the service name from one table and you have the service date from another table. Again, you probably have a service performed table, right, that 
indicates that this car had this performed on, on this day, right? Okay, so you have your service history, service performed, whatever. That is a table that you're going to be maintaining. All right? So therefore, what will you do? You'll have the service ID from the service history table, and you'll have the service date from the service history table, and those will be the two columns that you maintain. All right? Now, you don't want to type in the service ID Instead, you'll have a drop-down, and that will pull from the service table. So in reality, you're not updating the service table. You're only going to be updating the service history table. And you're updating the service ID in that table, in the service history table, but you're not at all updating the service table. Just like in a minute here, when I add this drop-down, I'll be seeing the faculty rank description, from the faculty rank table, and I'll be seeing the location or building and location from the location table, but I'm not going to be updating those tables. I'll only be updating the faculty table. So when I put edit, it gives me the choice of, you know, I can change, edit the page, uh, or I can edit the name of the service. Like if I, uh, you didn't get an oil change on that day, you got tire change or something. Well, you don't want to do that. You don't, because if you did do that, that would change the description in the service table from oil change to tire change. Yeah. And if we're ever going to have, what you want to do is you don't want to edit the name. You want to display a drop-down and allow them to select a new name. So your drop-down will be from the services table, but the field that you're changing is going to be the service ID in the service history table. All right? We'll see an example of that in a second. When I start adding faculty rank to this, I'm not going to be updating the faculty rank field. All right? When I go here, I'm not going to be updating the faculty rank field. I'm going to be updating the faculty rank field in, well, let me rephrase that. I'm not going to be updating the faculty rank description in the faculty rank table. I'm going to be updating the faculty rank in the faculty table. All right. So let's go and let's make a drop down for faculty rank. And, and maybe that will make some of this a little more clear. I'll go in and I'll create a second data source. Don't be stingy with the data sources. A lot of times people try to come to try to like do a lot with one data source. Each data source is sort of think of it as a component. The data source for that details view is from the faculty table because that's what we're displaying and that's what we're editing from the faculty table. Another component that we're going to have here is a list of faculty ranks. Well, our list of faculty ranks has nothing to do really with the faculty table. It's simply a list of faculty ranks. Now, we'll use that as a drop-down, but we don't need to join that to the faculty table or anything. We simply need a list of faculty ranks. And that we can pull from the faculty rank table. So I'll go in here, pick my data source, next. Select. What did you pick as the data source? Just the same one I've been using the whole time. Oh, OK. The same. The same connection string? Yeah. Okay. There's my list of faculty ranks. Finish. So you pulled F rank from faculty or no from rank from the rank table, right? Yeah, that's that. That's my point. Again, what do I want to appear in the drop?